What's that? We beat him! This is Hell in a Cell graded. So the first match of the night is the kickoff match. We've got Mandy Rose versus one half of the women's tag team champions, Natalia. And this one just gets off. It just gets off going. We see lots of reversals, lots of cartwheels, lots of wrist locks until Mandy Rose locks in a calf crusher to take control of this one for a little while. Natalia is trying to fight back in this one, but Mandy Rose manages to catch Natalia's neck on the top rope and she very much remains in control of this one. Natalia reverses an abdominal stretch from Mandy and then we see like a very extended period of roll-ups, arm bars, big boots and whatnot until Natalia manages to get Mandy Rose down, lock in the sharpshooter and get that submission win. Hooey! Giving this one straight off the bat a C plus, I think Mandy Rose really held her own against Natalia in this one. And there were some really good creative reversals too. I'm pretty intrigued to see where this view could go and fingers crossed we can get some nice matches from these two women again. And now we're kicking off the pay-per-view proper. It's the promo package at the start. Really, really cool aesthetic. It's very similar. If not, I think it's just pretty much like a direct copy of the radio host from the Warriors, where you see like the close-up of the face and she's saying all the stuff like, yeah, do the cool things. But I like this and it's getting me hyped. The Warriors is one of my favorite films. It gets a big old whew, thumbs up from me. So first proper match on the pay-per-view and it is Bianca Belair defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Bayley inside Hell in a Cell, which is really cool. And Bianca Belair, she just starts off hot in this one. Lots and lots of power slams, which then leads Bayley to roll out, grab some chairs from under the ring to try and turn the tide in this one. We then get some really awesome, it's almost like a Star Wars choreographed lightsaber battle. We see Bianca Belair use her hair and Bailey use the chair and they are dueling with one another for a little bit. But then ultimately Bianca Belair, she drop kicks the chair straight into Bailey's face to remain in control of this one. An attempted superplex from Bianca Belair goes awry. She ends up on the apron and then Bailey just grabs her, throws her shoulder first into the ring post and then Bailey is just targeting that arm. The match then spills outside and we see Bailey. she's very much still in control at this point. She has the kendo sticks. She's thwacking Bianca Belair around the back with those. And then she pulls off a really cool sunset flip power bomb uh, just off the floor and then throws Bianca Belair straight into the cell wall. It looks really, really cool. Bailey then goes to set up the dual kendo sticks. If you remember from last year's Hell in a Cell, like the two kendo sticks taped together, Darth Maul, da -da 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 -da. she sets it up between the cell wall and the apron. But before she even gets to do anything to Bianca Belair, Bianca Belair comes around, woo! Hoofs a straight spine buster through them both, gets her back into the ring, but can only pick up a close two count. Bailey mounts her comeback, however. She sets up a chair, and then on the bottom rung of the chair, she manages to tie Bianca's hair onto that so she can pull her closer and just like start applying pressure to the shoulder that's been injured and like she's kicking it and everything. However, Belair gets out of this and then ties her own hair around Bailey's wrist. She's got nowhere to go. She's got nowhere to go, guys. Where's she gonna go? Go. Who knows? After an onslaught from Bianca for a little while, Bailey rolls out of the ring. She's trying to plead with the official, let me out, I need to get out, don't want to be in here anymore. But Bianca comes from behind, hoofs Bailey in the back of the head. She like bounces off the cell wall, rolls back in, and that just leads Bianca to get whoop, Bailey up for a kiss of death, does it onto a ladder, and gets the one, two, three, and that's the match. Bianca Belair retains the SmackDown Women's Championship. Giving this one a B plus. I really enjoyed this match. I don't think it was as good as maybe Sasha Banks and Bailey from previous years, Hell in a Cell. However, you know, it's Bianca Belair's first Hell in a Cell match and she did really, really well, I thought. They both did really well. And what they lacked in creativity, maybe using the actual cell structure itself, the way that they used the weapons in this match was, it, it absolutely made up for it. So yeah, giving this one a B plus. Cesaro versus Seth Rollins, and this one kicks straight off as Cesaro is coming out to the ring. Here is Seth Rollins behind him, boots him in back ahead, but no, 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 Cesaro is having none of it. He mounts a comeback, throws Seth Rollins back into the ring, and the match is underway. 
Cesaro very much in control at the start of this one. He's hitting European uppercuts, axe handles, but Seth Rollins manages to drive Cesaro into the turnbuckle to turn the tide in this one. Seth really tries to put Cesaro down in this one. He's hitting a number of knees and stiff strikes to the eye of Cesaro. However, Cesaro comes back round, hitting a big old bag of uppercuts and a nice old, it's like a discus clothesline as well, which would look really, really cool to take control again in this one. Seth manages to hit a cracker of a forearm, just a bosh, straight to the back of Cesaro's head. Sounded unreal. And then Seth leads up with this. He does a falcon arrow, but only gets a close two count in this one. And then he tries to go for a stomp, but Cesaro's like, no, no, no. And he reverses it into a nice, ooh, another big old discus lariat. Oh, perfect. The end of this one comes when we see Cesaro. He gets the swings in. He gets a sharpshooter in. He then tries to get a cross face in, which he does beautifully, by the way. The transition was unbelievable. He then tries to go back for another sharpshooter. And as Seth Rollins is like reaching for the bottom rope, Cesaro manages to get his arm. And he is just like stomping on that arm, trying to injure Seth Rollins. But as that is happening, Seth Rollins manages to grab Cesaro and get a really cheeky little roll up for the one, two, three. Seth Rollins has got this one. He's done it. He's, he's done it guys. Given this match a B, I thought it was a really good bout between these two. Maybe not the best that they've had together, but still really good nonetheless. And I think it makes sense for Seth to finally pick up a win here. I just really hope Cesaro doesn't get lost in just the title picture. I want to see him back in the Universal title picture. And however, you know, Money in the Bank is coming up very, very soon. So I guess we'll see where that could go. Fingers crossed we see some big wins for Cesaro in the future. Next up, it is spooky shenanigans time, everybody as we have Shayna Baszler going up against Alexa Bliss and at the start of this one Shayna's very hesitant to attack Alexa Bliss and she's just looking spooked why why is she looking spooked why don't do this don't do this to Shayna Baszler anyway anyway I digress Reginald hops up onto the apron distracts Bliss long enough for Shayna Baszler to start her attack Bliss comes back aggressively in this one, and I do like to see this aggressive side of Alexa Bliss too. I think it looks really good. Uh, Reginald hops back onto the apron, trying to distract Alexa, which works because Shayna Baszler mounts a comeback. She starts attacking the arm of Alexa Bliss, and oh, it's spooky, guys, because as we think, she's writhing in pain, going, ah, that really hurts. She's going, ah, <laughs> don't hurt, pal. Don't hurt. Come on. Come get me. We see more joint manipulation from Shayna Baszler onto Alexa Bliss, but this weird thing happens where Alexa Bliss is staring at Shayna Baszler and this, like, spooks Shayna. She starts to let the let go of the hold and she seems really disturbed by something. Uh, and this gives Alexa Bliss enough of an opening to hit a really nice spike DDT. It looked pretty cool. It looked pretty cool. And then, oh dear, as, uh, as we see... Alexa Bliss gets Shayna Baszler out of the ring. Bliss then locks eyes with Nia Jax and this weird interaction happens where we see Alexa Bliss raise her hand and as she raises her hand, this also makes Nia Jax raise her hand. And then we see Reginald trying to poke Nia Jax like, come on, come on, snap out of it, snap out of it. And as Alexa Bliss does a swinging motion, um, Nia Jax slaps Reginald and sends him flying. She just hoofs him, which yeah, cool. But Alexa Bliss has mind control powers now. Yay. After this interaction has happened, Baszler sneaks in. She tries to lock in the Carafuda clutch, only for it to get reversed into a Sister Abigail and then a Twisted Bliss for the one, two, three. Alexa Bliss picks up the win in this one. Giving this one a D, the mind control stuff just did not do it for me. And granted, we're very early on in the storyline for this one. And potentially, they could do some cool things down the line. However, they've not sold me on it just yet. And was it cool to see Reginald get hoofed? It certainly was. Was it cool to see no sign of Lily? It certainly was. But please, can we get Shayna Baszler away from all this? Let her, please, please, please. She deserves to do so much bigger and better things. Go up to that women's title picture. Go on, lass, you can do it. Um, was it also cool to see a really aggressive side to Alexa Bliss? That certainly was very, very cool for me as well. But at the moment, not doing it for me. So yes, it is a big old D grade for this match. Next match, we see Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, which is always going to be a good time, I think. And we see, very much from the off, Kevin Owens just getting one up on Sami Zayn. Go on, lad. Go get him. 
Sammy tries to attack the throat of Kevin Owens. That's a big focus on this match. And that was obviously injured a few weeks prior on SmackDown by Commander Aziz. But as Sammy tries to do a suplex, no, no, no. Kevin Owens reverses it, gets him in the corner, hits a nice old cannonball for a, ooh, a very close two count. Sammy does, however, manage to throw Kevin Owens' throw onto the top rope. He chucks him to the outside, does a really nice sunset dive, just a flip dive over the top rope onto Kevin Owens, rolls him back in, and then gets some big old kicks on in the corner. Ooh, Sammy, them feet are deadly. Yes. Owens rallies a comeback in this one, however. He hits a clothesline to the outside of the ring, gets on the apron, tries to do a swanton. Sammy gets his knees up, however, manages to throw Kevin back in the ring, hit a blue thunderbomb, but only, whoo, for a close two count. Ah, blummy nick. The action spills out of the ring once again, but Kevin Owens manages to hit Sami Zayn with a stunner to the outside and almost gets a count out victory. Kevin Owens, he then pulls out a flurry of stiff strikes, really laying it in there to Sami Zayn. However, Sami manages to counter this. He kicks Kevin Owens in the back of the head. This sends Owens' throat straight into the bottom rope, lines him up for a halluva kick, and then boom, one, two, three, that's it. Kevin Owens is done and dusted. Sami Zayn picks up the win in this one. I'm giving this one a B plus. These two just know how to put on a good match, don't they? They just know each other so well. And it was really, really cool to see Sami Zayn finally pick up the win in this too, because he's not really won a lot of his matches recently. So I'm all down for Sami getting some naughty wins, capitalizing on Owen's injuries a little bit, and, uh, and yeah, building himself back up again. I just hope we see more matches, more singles matches in WWE between these two down the line. And yeah, let's see this feud just go into bigger, better, and more brutal things. I'm all down for this. Next up, we see Raw Women's Champion Rhea Ripley defend the title against Charlotte Flair. And before the bell has even rung, as the referee is holding up that championship belt, Charlotte Flair takes it off him, whoa, whizzes it straight into Rhea Ripley, knocks her down, and uh, very much goes on to get the advantage in this one straight away. That's naughty, naughty Charlotte. Come on now. Charlotte is very much in control of this match. She locks in a headlock on Rhea Ripley and is just going to town with her. She's toying with her. She is just taunting her like nobody's business. No matter what Rhea tries to do in this one, Charlotte Flair is on hand to reverse everything she throws at her. We then see Charlotte try and target the leg of Rhea Ripley, but Ripley tries to make a comeback. She hits a headbutt, she hits a super kick, and then she hits a missile drop kick, which looks really, really awesome. Rhea then locks in the prison trap. Charlotte rolls out of it, so Rhea goes flying into the turnbuckle, hits her head, sitting on the floor. That lines Rhea up for a natural selection from Charlotte, but she can only get the two count on this one. Charlotte is very much on top of this one. She's targeting the leg. She's trying to lock in the figure four. She goes up to the top rope, but then Rhea follows her up, does a superplex, boom, then hits a riptide on Charlotte Flair, only to get a two count as Charlotte Flair gets her foot on the rope. Blummy neck. The match then spills outside. Charlotte Flair very much still targeting the leg of Rhea Ripley. She drop kicks it into some steel steps, rolls Rhea back in, gets the figure four locked in. However, Rhea Ripley manages to like, whilst the submission is still locked in, manages to roll both herself and Charlotte Flair out of the ring. And then in a weird, weird ending, Rhea grabs the top bit of the announce desk, throws it into Charlotte Flair's face. And that is, that's, that's it, that DQ. DQ finish, wah wah. Both women then continue to brawl inside the ring after the bell's rung. Uh, Rhea hits a riptide and that is it. Wow. Giving this one a C, this just seems like a really bad decision to me. I feel like this should have been the match where Rhea Ripley gets a redemption on Charlotte Flair from the WrestleMania 36 stuff by absolutely just cleaning house, just, just pinning Charlotte Flair clean, proving that she's very much worthy to be the Raw Women's Champion and also carry the women's roster just further into the future, build new stars. This makes no sense to me. Why WWE still want to protect Charlotte Flair like this is baffling. Perhaps there's something bigger down the line, who knows? But at the moment, it makes no sense. Just pass the torch along. WWE, that's what you should be doing, but but here we are. Fingers crossed something better happens for Rhea in the future. And it is main event o'clock, everybody. It's Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell. And bear in mind, the stipulation here is that if Bobby wins, Drew can no longer challenge for the WWE Championship as long as Bobby is still the champ. 
And this one kicks off instantly. Bobby rolls out the ring, trying to get some weapons to use against Drew McIntyre, but Drew is having none of it. He gets out there straight away, grabs Bobby, and continuously just starts throwing him into the cell wall. Brutal. Drew, he's on fire in this match. He hits Bobby Lashley with the steel steps, rolls him back into the ring, tries to hit a future shock, but Bobby reverses that. However, again, Drew is just too hot. He manages to get a kendo stick and just starts wailing on Bobby Lashley. Hooey! Lashley mounts a brief comeback for a little while as MVP hands him his cane. Bobby Lashley hits Drew McIntyre with that. However, Drew is just, whatever Bobby does in this match, Drew just comes back with even more fire. He gets Bobby Lashley up for a white noise and then does a white noise onto the steel steps outside the ring. It's awesome. It looks so, so cool. Go on, Drew, lad. You're a big mad man. Drew throws a slew of steel chairs into the ring and he is just slamming Bobby's face straight into there. Only manages to get a two count, however. So he gets a chair, goes up to the top rope and looks like he's going to come down and crack Bobby over the head with it. But Bobby reverses it, turns it into a hurt lock. But then Drew, he just comes in. Woo, he like rolls and Bobby Lashley goes boof straight into the turnbuckle like that. Boof. Good that. A beautiful looking powerbomb and spine buster firmly puts Drew McIntyre in control of this one until we roll outside of the ring. We see Drew go and try and hit Bobby with the steel steps, but Bobby reverses it, grabs Drew and just starts slamming him continuously into the cell wall. And then we get a really creative spot. We see sort of Bobby Lashley pinning Drew McIntyre into the corner of the cell. He gets a cu- uh, he gets a kendo stick, passes it through the chain link fence to MVP. And then as like Bobby is holding Drew in the corner, MVP slides the kendo stick through the chain link fence to trap Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley just lays in some very, very stiff strikes. It's oof, it, ooh, painful, ooh, yeah. Drew then manages to get himself free. However, he can't mount a comeback as when he gets into the ring, Bobby just continuously slams his face into some steel chairs and then manages to get a kendo stick and goes to town on Drew McIntyre. You should see, if you've not seen it, I think the, the photos are on Twitter. Ooh. Drew McIntyre's back looks very, very painful. However, as Bobby keeps slapping him, wow, wow, what's that? As Bobby keeps slapping him round the chest with the kendo stick, this just fires Drew up, who catches the kendo stick under his arm, and he is ready to go. Drew manages to grab a chair, but then Bobby rakes at the eyes of Drew. And as Drew goes to swing the chair at Bobby, he misses, spins round, Bobby pushes him, which then in turn has Drew McIntyre fall into the ref. And it's a ref bump, everybody! Oh, it's happening. This then leads Drew to find his opening. He then hits a future shock DDT on Bobby Lashley, goes for the pinfall, but obviously the ref is out. So Drew gets up, he calls to the referee who is outside of the ring, looking after the cell door, making sure nobody gets in. And Drew is like, come on, get yourself in here. You're about to officiate this match. So the referee opens it, goes in, goes for the pinfall. One, two, no, no, no. Here comes MVP pulling the referee out of the ring so Drew McIntyre does not get his three count. And then as Drew goes to square up to MVP, like, excuse me, what do you think you're doing, sir? MVP is like, yo, I'm bouncing out. And as he goes to try and go out, not going to get that in because there's another official out there who's just locked the door back up. And then, oh, wait, does Drew McIntyre hit MVP with a nice, sweet Claymore kick? Ooh, good stuff. They both spill outside the ring, and as Drew is still very much focused on MVP, up from behind comes Bobby Lashley, gets the hurt lock in, but a cleverly positioned table from earlier in the match that is between the cell wall and the floor, Drew goes whoop, and just launches himself backwards and puts himself and Bobby Lashley through a table, so Bobby Lashley lets go of the hurt lock. We get back inside the ring, Drew McIntyre goes mental on Bobby Lashley with a chair, but as Drew McIntyre tries to hit a Claymore on Bobby Lashley, he avoids it and then ends up just choke slamming Drew McIntyre off the apron through another table outside the ring. And it looks, oh, that looks amazing. Drew manages to mount another comeback. Here's a future shock DDT, lines up for a Claymore. And just as he's about to set off and get Bobby Lashley, MVP grabs Drew's leg, which leads Bobby to get a blooming very cheeky roll up. One, two, three, surprising, very surprising. But yeah, gets a cheeky roll up, one, two, three. And Bobby Lashley has retained the WWE title. 
Given this one an A minus, I thought this was a fantastic, brutal match. I might have bumped it up to an A. If it wasn't for the finish, the finish didn't really do it for me, but both men really pulled it out of the bag here, especially Drew, who just comes away from this looking awesome, I thought. Bobby, maybe not so much with a cheeky roll-up win there. I really want to see him get some more definitive wins as just a really dominant badass man, which we all know he is, we all know he is, and perhaps we'll see that later down the line as well at SummerSlam, perhaps he retains, perhaps he loses, who knows, I'm just rambling at this point, but yeah, I think this was the right decision, watch Drew sort of climb his way back up to the title picture now, and then stop him from getting stale, and have the audience really get back behind him again, but yes, main event, A- minus from me. Overall, I'm gonna give Hell in a Cell 2021 a B plus. I thought it was a great pay-per-view. I thought there was very few duds in terms of matches, really good wrestling. The Hell in a Cell stipulation itself wasn't overdone, which is really, really nice to see. Keep that for special occasions. That's what it, that's what it should be all about. We saw some nice surprises in terms of heel wins and, and such, which I thought was really cool. Uh, the Rhea Ripley and the Alexa Bliss stuff, not my cup of tea at the moment. We'll see where that goes down the line. Um, so that brought it down a little bit for me, but personally, as the last pay-per-view inside the Thunderdome, I really think WWE pulled it out of the bag, they did a fantastic job, and uh, and yeah, it gets a B plus from me. And thank you very much everybody, that is Hell in a Cell graded 2021, thank you for having me. I know it's not been your usual Tom Campbell, who's very much more articulate and just a better all-round person than I am, but thank you so much for sticking with me if you stuck with me, and uh, and yeah, Adam's going in hell in a smell. Yay! We're doing it. E, 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 W, O, for life. Wicked. I'll see you soon. Have a nice day. Bye.